Proverbs chapter 6, verse 16 through 19. Here's us. Here's seven things that the Lord hates. That I think we should know about that we don't do them. So, Proverbs chapter six, verse six, says, "These six things the Lord hates. Yes, seven are an abomination to Him. Number one, a proud look. So think about that. God hates a proud look. Someone who is walking around arrogant." Remember, Satan was kicked out of heaven because of pride. And, and in fact, God gives grace to the humble. Humble is the opposite of pride. Right? But he resists the proud. But God hates pride. Number one, he hates a proud look. Number two, verse 17 says, he hates a lying tongue. The devil again, he's the father of all lies. And if I find myself lying... But I'm just doing what the devil does. And I'm not doing what God, I'm doing what God hates. If, I, if, if I'm a constant liar. Number three, he hates hands that shed innocent blood. Also known as murderers. So think about that. If, 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 if we went around teaching this, that God hates murderers, really, will there be mass shootings? Knowing that, I mean, they might, but... This person's going to know that he's doing something that God hates. But it's very rare for us to talk about these things. And so if you knew that God hated murder, and that God hates hands that shed innocent blood, you may think twice about doing it. Verse 18. Okay. That's a good one, Brett. Hands that shed innocent blood. Going back to that one, murder. Yes, think about abortion. That's a good one. Even think about hate, hating someone. Because Jesus said that if you hate someone, it's like murder. Think about hating your fellow brother for the color of their skin. Really? You call yourself a Christian, but you're prejudiced, you're racist? But here, this particular verse, he hates those hands that shed innocent blood. Yes, think about abortion. Verse 18. Hands that devise wicked, I mean, a heart that devises wicked plans. Verse 18. A heart that devises wicked plans. You think wicked, wicked. What is wicked? Think of a man who wants to commit adultery or a woman who wants to commit adultery. You think she's devising wicked plans in her heart or wicked plans in his heart? Yes, nobody falls into adultery. It's a plan that they're setting up. So God hates a heart that devises wicked plans. What else does he hate? He hates feet that are swift to running to evil. So if you're, if you're just constantly following evil, you know that there's evil over there, and you go, you hate that. You hate followers that are following evil. Verse 19, he hates a false witness who speaks lies. So on, this, on this list, he mentions lies twice. You think God hates lies? Absolutely. And the last one, he hates someone who sows discord among brethren. We have someone who's causing division. Think about a husband who's breaking up a family, causing division. A wife who's breaking up a family. Think about someone that goes to a church and causes division. God hates it. A house divided among itself can't not stand, right? And so these are seven reminders for us of things that God hates. And so hopefully this will encourage us not to do them if we knew about them. And of course, this, this is not this is not the only list. We, you know, kind of like Fernando said, yes, he hates us not obeying our parents. He hates us breaking the Ten Commandments. He hates uh, divorce. It's another one he mentions in the Bible. So here, this particular list here: proud look, a lying tongue, hands that shed innocent blood, a heart that devises wicked plans, feet that are swift to running to evil, a false witness who speaks lies, and one who dis. Those discord among brethren when that causes division. It's funny you started off with pride. Uh, me and my wife were just talking about that, <clears throat> about pride. And we got this, it's ironic, we got this Pride Week. Um, you know, I'm sorry, I started thinking about it. I said, So you're proud that you're committing sin. Right. And that's what it is. You, you know, you're, you're saying, I'm proud for the way that I am. 
and you have a church that says they're supporting that. <clears throat> what about being born again? You know, we all have, we're all, you know, born with something. We all have sinful nature. So you're, you're proud of your sinful nature. Right. That's what I'm saying. I'm, I'm proud to be an alcoholic. <laughs> You know, you know, that was just ironic, you know, pride, using that word, that term pride. Um, and, it, and the people use it racial, racially. You know, you see, um, obviously, uh, you know, Tongan pride, like Filipino pride, you know, I'm black and I'm proud. <laughs> no, you know, that, that's, um, well, that's not sin to be racial, but that's, you know, you actually had no choice. <laughs> so to be, pro you know, showing pride in that, that's, yeah, that's, uh, but yeah, I thought that was ironic that the gays use that as a term. So you're, you're proud to be a sinner. So when, when, uh, when it comes to lies, I always, I always think about you know, what it says here, a false witness who pours out lies. Uh, I've always thought of it just being like, hey, Ponzi, uh, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to send you this much money, or I just made this much money. I'll send you some later. And, and I have the attention of not doing so. You know, like, uh, my mouth is saying something that's not true, but lies can also be just living a hypocritical life, you know, I mean, it's, it's similar. It's very true in first John one, six, if we claim to have fellowship with him, that's you speaking something, you saying something, you know, proud and yet walk in the darkness. That's you doing the opposite. We lie and do not live out the truth. That's first John one, six. Oh yes. It will see in the, uh, in verse, 16, 17, a proud look, proud, that word, proud. We see in uh, Isaiah chapter 14 and Ezekiel chapter 28, we see about Lucifer. Mm -hmm. God created him, right? A good, right? Why God fall on? Why, why did he fall on? Because of proud look in Isaiah chapter 14. The way he claims, sit, I am. It is true. That's what we see in this. The six in the Lord, hey, number one is the crown Lord. And what it is when you're being proud, you're being the opposite of God. God is humble. Jesus is humble. In fact, most of these things here, the total opposite of God. If we're supposed to imitate God, God does not lie. Proud look, a lying tongue. God does not shed the hands of innocent blood. Ever. You know? Every sin can fall under a heart that devises wicked schemes. Yeah. And the last one, if the last one's on the um, verse 19, on the NLT version, it says, a person who, hope, who sows discord in a family. The New King James says, brethren. The NLT version says family. So someone who breaks up a family. And just think about that. One out of two marriages end up being split. There's discord in a family. One in one in every two, two marriages. And we act like it's no big deal. It's something God hates. You were saying about uh, divorce that, you know, it's, we think it's like it's no big deal. I was saying that that's because we're conforming to the patterns of the world. To the world, it's no big deal. Go to the attorney and get a divorce. I mean, it's like some people look at, well, why get married? You know, there's so many divorces. Mm -hmm. that, that's the excuse that some of the young people are using. Um, that getting divorced anyway, so why get married? <clears throat> But um, yeah, it's just conforming because because God says don't. <laughs> just conforming to the uh, 
what the world does. <clears throat> it's a lukewarm gospel. <laughs> 